OK. Welcome, everybody. Great to see there's still people here. Um, unfortunately, I'm on this side, and all you guys are on that side. But yeah, it shouldn't matter. The audio is amplified, so you should be able to hear me quite OK over there. So this talk is going to be about uh, Apache Cloud Stack and Open Daylight. And it's going to be a short talk. We have like 30 minutes. And you guys are probably, obviously, all waiting to go home now. So I'm going to really make it like 30 minutes. And it's going to be about a lot of diverse things. Um, it's going to be a little bit about community, about how to deal with different communities and different projects. It's going to be a little bit about technology. And it's going to be a little bit about me, because I actually had this weird idea of doing this. So first of all, let's get started with Open Daylight. What's Open Daylight? Open Daylight is an interesting project. They got kickstarted, well, I think just about over two years ago. And they really rapidly gained a lot of traction. And they said, we want to be the software defined networking controller of all software defined networking controllers, actually. So they set up a foundation. They set up a, a development model. And they got a lot of traction within the industry donating bits and pieces. So we have a pretty much a stable controller core. There's and various sub-projects like virtual antenna networking, all donated by various vendors and a lot of open source people who are now working on the code base. So a very interesting project in the terms that they don't have a really clear set goal that I was able to determine. Uh, they think they want to do a lot with software-defined networking, but like, another, like the other vendors where we have support for in Apache Cloud Stack, like Mironet and Juniper Control, they have a very clear idea about this is the type of servers that we are going to offer. Whereas Open Daylight has a more broad view, like we're just going to support everything, and we're going to le leave it up to our API consumers and our product consumers to actually <coughs> determine what it is they want to use. So here we are with Apache Cloud Stack. Well, I see most of the same faces I saw during Paul's talk, so I think I'm not going to go into the networking details. But with just a little bit of background, the thing we're interested in here is virtual networking. That's basically the stuff that we do with software-defined networking in Cloud Stack. So virtual networking is mainly interested in what we call advanced, uh, advanced mode networks. So it's used to isolate networks. It's used to provide some additional services on the network layer, which are mainly interest interesting if you use the layer two segregation or the tenant isolation we have in advanced networking. Though there's actually no real reason not to use it with basic networking. Actually, nobody really worked on it yet because of the way the, the traffic is separated using the security groups it's more difficult to actually implement it in the software-defined network. And the real isolation suits itself pretty well for use with software-defined networking. So why would you want to integrate with a project like the Open Daylight? And especially at the time when they didn't even have their first release out. I mean, at the moment, we have the hydrogen release of Open Daylight, which is pretty much a stable release, although it is their first release. But at the time, I started looking into Open Daylight. We didn't really have any release out of the door yet. Um, so, but the point here is if there's this new project, it's gaining a lot of traction. And Apache Cloud Stack is an orchestration platform. That means that we don't actually do anything ourselves. We only just make sure that whatever it is you want, by clicking on the UI or sending an API call, is something we can actually hand down to somebody else and say, OK, this is what the guy really wants in terms of technology or in terms of actions. You, guy, you go and figure it out. So the viability of such a project is really in the ability to yeah, have an ecosystem, to have support for multiple vendors, multiple projects, et cetera. So especially with a startup project like uh, Open Daylight, it's very interesting to really get traction going and really integrate with the community right away to make sure that they actually know that there's another cloud orchestration system uh, out there, because a lot of the folks working on the open daylight work on the other open uh, project that we know so much about. Uh, and getting some, getting some knowledge and some traction inside the open daylight community to support uh, Apache Cloud Stack is actually a, a lot of work. You have to go meet developers, et cetera. So that's why it, it was an interesting project for me to actually go out into the open daylight community and see what we could do for Apache Cloud Stack. The first thing I had to do was actually try and figure out what Open Daylight actually was. was. So like I explained, it, it, it does a multitude of things. It does virtual tenant networking. It does some OVSDB stuff. It is pretty well usable with real physical switches for data center management, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I was mainly interested in doing the yeah, 
virtual networking bit. Um, at the time, there were a couple of solutions to do virtual networking. There's the, the, the virtual tenant networking bit, but I was mainly interested in the OVSDB uh, part of the system. The reason I'm interested in the OVSDB uh, uh, portion of the network is actually because we already have some support for it in CloudStack. So we already know a bit about how to deal with OVSDB. We already know a bit about how to deal with the tunnels. So that made it very easy for us to say, okay, this is something we already know. Let's see how we can translate that knowledge into something we can do with the Open Data project. So we selected the, basically the two projects in Open Daylight that deal with uh, a virtual networking on the Open vSwitch layer. That's the OpenFlow stuff, which is actually part of the core of Open Daylight almost, which deals with pushing in flows into tables and basically telling your switches, your virtual switches, which data to send where and to create tunnels, et cetera. And the OVSDB bit. bit. Now, for those of you who are not really familiar with Open vSwitch, those two projects actually work together to create a remotely controllable switch out of Open vSwitch. So there's the OV, uh, OpenFlow bit, which makes sure that you can send traffic from somewhere to somewhere else using a set of rules like if the MAC address is this, send it to that port. If the packet is coming in on port A, send it to port B, et cetera. And the OVSDB part is actually the database part. It, it deals with controlling the switch, or actually the metadata of the switch. Because if you look at Open vSwitch, it's pretty difficult to say, okay, this is a 24-port switch, because it isn't. It's a software construct. So in the physical world, it's easy to say, okay, the only thing we can actually manage is port 1 to port 24, and that's it. But in a software switch, it's basically up to us. It's software, so we can create it. So the OVSDB part was actually designed to say, we can use this to create tunnels, to create ports, et cetera. It's the thing that both the hypervisor talks to and the open, uh, uh, yeah, any software-defined networking controller talks to. And like I said, we over already had some support in it. So we have now, at the moment, we have GRE support in uh, Apache CloudStack. We have VXLAN support in Apache CloudStack. And basically, they already do what it is that we want to do here because creating virtual networking is nothing more than setting up some tunnels like VXLAN or GRE tunnels, and then setting up the proper ports. So the end, point, the end point here is that we said, okay, let's go ahead and yeah, build a virtual network using open daylight with the technologies of GRE, VXLAN, and OVSDB, which are at the time already supported. So that's when stuff actually became really interesting. Because we selected the projects, it's like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. There, we selected the right projects in the uh, community to work with, and then we ran into trouble. Because then we started looking on, on the API website, like, okay, what's the API that I have to consume? And the page was empty. Um, I, okay, not being hindered by not having a wiki page, I opened up the source code, and I just said, okay, if I can figure out from the uh, documentation, I'm gonna figure it out with the source code. And that page was pretty much empty as well. So that was really, that was a little bit of a problem, and a problem I didn't really anticipate, because yeah, we're used to working with pretty much enterprise-grade software, and suddenly here's a project that promises something, but they don't actually have it. Well, I knew it was like a pre-release version, but here we had to do something really special. And that's something that uh, is one of the important points to take away from this presentation. We had to talk to a human being. And that's scary at first, because you're suddenly, you're there, you're like a cloud tech developer, and there's this big beast out there, which is the Open Daylight project, and try to figure out who to talk to. And uh, lucky for us, or lucky for me in this case, is that the OVSDB uh, community was a really young, new community, pretty small group, and they're actually really enthusiastic. The moment I jumped on the IRC channel, I think within five minutes, I had the first few hellos, like, hey, how are you? Welcome, what can we do for you? And then you start talking about, well, I'm, I'm this guy from CloudStack and I want to do some integration. What are you guys working on? And suddenly you get the whole conversation going and within 20 minutes, I was in a web, uh, in a web meeting with a lot, of, a lot of guys. I got invited to their weekly uh, progress meetings and before I knew it, I was actually part of the Open Daylight OVSDB development community and was actually trying to help them to get, okay, guys, I need this. It's, yeah, we don't have it yet. Okay, I'll build it. So that was really, a, for me, a fun experience about and re reaching out to other people and saying, hey, this is how it works in open source. I mean, we are a pretty cool community as uh, Apache CloudStack, but there's actually a lot of communities out there and they're pretty cool as well. 
and it's nice to go talk to those people, meet those people, and see what we can learn from them. But that didn't really solve all the problems. Uh, the interesting bit here um, is that when we set up the OVSDB project, or actually when, it was, when, I, when I got involved, they were already having some clear, clear ideas about where they wanted to go. Some of them were uh, inspired by that other stack. Some of them were inspired by the way they thought about OVSDB. And here I came in with a different type of orchestration platform with some different ideas about what I thought would be the right way to go. And the most interesting discussion we had was what is expected of a software-defined networking controller. I expected, having worked with some of the commercial implementations, a very high-level abstraction API that would allow me just to say, create network, create port, and have everything else be done by the controller. And their idea at the time was mainly like, okay, yeah, we're just gonna provide some kind of structured REST-based wrapper to OVSDB, and we're gonna let you figure out everything. So there were, there were some interesting debates we had about, okay, how, how can we resolve this? What's, what's wisdom? In the end, in true open source fashion, we probably ended up with both. So we have a pretty much a direct layer into OVSDB that you can use if you're interested in directly manipulating the switches on your hypervisors. And there's the abstraction layer. And I'm probably gonna see a smile on a couple of faces here, but the abstraction layer is now called the Neutron Norbound API for some reason. That also put in a point about where are the brains. There's always some state that you need to keep in your, uh, in your networking uh, kit. For example, which hypervisors are connected to this particular network? Which ports do I have configured? Um, which virtual machines are already there on the network? With CloudStack, we have pretty much the model like we own the world. So we always say, if it is state-based information, we have it and we put it in a MySQL database. You don't worry about it. If you want some new state information, we will push it to, to you. But we do expect you to actually retain the things you promised us to do. So if we tell you to create a network, we expect our underlying infrastructure, like our hypervisors or our storage, to actually keep that information. And that was something that Open Daylight didn't have at, them at that time. I mean, they were keeping state like in memory for hypervisors, for network, for tunnels, etc. So the moment, and it worked pretty well, but the moment you actually had to restart one of your, open, your uh, open daylight nodes, the entire state would be lost. And with the state, obviously, the entire setup of your virtual network at that time. Again, a lot of discussion. So we figured out, okay, we can do this two ways. We can build some kind of scheduling system into CloudStack that will periodically check if your controller state is still sane, knows about the stuff we care about, and then reprovision it, and we could say, okay, open daylight, actually save the state for us, and when you restart, make sure that everything is restored to working order. That debate was really interesting because we had to do that debate over three projects. We had to do it with CloudStack, obviously. We had to do it with open daylight. But actually, we had to do it with the Neutron people as well because they were on the same uh, IRC channel. They were dealing with the same issue. So actually, we had to sit down with the other guys with the Open Daylight guys, and just work out, okay, how can we find something that is workable within the OpenStack framework in their Neutron plugin, that is workable within the CloudStack software, and what's workable within the Open Daylight software. In the end, we chickened out and just put it in Open Daylight. But it was an interesting, it was an interesting debate for a time. And then obviously, you, yeah, we were planning to do this in, in CloudStack. Uh, and in CloudStack, we have a pretty much a fixed release schedule, so we propose a feature, you add a feature to master, and once it's in master, it pretty much gets shipped with the next release. So uh, uh, we were already working on the 4.3 release, so I wasn't in time for the 4.3 release, but basically I got my entire piece of code uh, working and submitted it into master because it was perfectly inside the feature uh, period. It was a new feature, it was pretty much well tested and ready. The only downside is those guys were actually not ready. Open Daylight wasn't in no position at that time to actually release any software. So for me it was like, what am I gonna do with this piece of software? Here I have a feature that I want to get out there to my uh, development community. 
to act as a technology peer view and maybe get some feedback from other guys in the cloud stack community to say, how can we leverage this and how can we make it work even better by submitting it to master? But on the other hand, there's a big risk that I some, somehow submitted something to master that might not even be a release. I mean, we were pretty sure that the open daylight were actually going in the direction of a release, but yeah. You never know, there might not be a release. So we took the save option, so we added it to master and we actually added a tag in the network service providers of CloudStack to mark it as an experimental feature. And as of today, I actually don't know the state of the plugin because they keep changing so much that I actually have to revisit it and see if it's still working with the current way of uh, OVSDB uh, is working. But we actually have a plugin, and, and that's a good thing. And it's a good thing for two reasons. First of all, it means that there's a sort of permanent line of communication between us and the Open Daylight community. I mean, we have the plugin. We have committed to supporting it because it's part of, uh, part of our mainline branch. So that means we have to keep talking to the, uh, to the people in Open Daylight. And the reverse is also true. Even though they're pretty much uh, um, working on uh, supporting OpenStack and supporting what their uh, commercial backers find important, I regularly get pings from those guys working in that community like, hey, how are you doing over at CloudStack? How do you think about what we're doing now? How is it gonna affect your plugin? So by simply having this plugin, I created a link between the two communities that if done correctly, we'll make sure that we, for now and for always, have some, yeah, have some friends inside the Open Daylight community and there's always a way of communicating and saying, hey, we already have this plugin. We were the first one with a sort of stable release in the, in the community. So let's make sure it's always properly supported. So let's get out to the technical details. How does it actually work? It works like pretty much all the other software-defined networking vendors that we have in, in Apache Cloud Stack. You start by adding a network service provider. So it's implemented as a network service provider in Cloud Stack. And you can see the question marks there. That's my ability to actually do JavaScript in Cloud, Cloud Stack. So if anybody is more in the JavaScript bit, I could use some help here. But uh, it is a network service provider. So we pretty much follow the mo model that we have for all our networking kit. So you're able to add it as a provider. You're able to configure, uh, add it as a network guru element, etc. By adding it as an element, you can add it to any of your network ser service offerings. So we created a new type of service, or actually a new provider. So now we have virtual networking support and you can select the open daylight as a provider uh, for virtual networking. And by setting this in your network offering, for those of you who are not too familiar with software defined networking, it basically triggers the backend code that says, hey, there's something special I need to do to create this network on the lower layer, so I need to trigger a particular guru in the code and make sure that it actually works. When you create a new network based on this offering, the interesting ma magic starts happening. By triggering the virtual networking and by creating a network using a particular network offering based on virtual networking, it will send out API calls to the Open Daylight uh, system. The Open Daylight will, uh, system will then do a few things. So first of all, we have to create a network. That's as simple as setting up a uni unique identifier and setting up a few parameters. But this is the first sort of our networking where we actually had to provision the hypervisors in the virtual network from within CloudStack. So we didn't only have to see, okay, this is the network we're working on or in any eventual ports, but actually we had to check how can we get the hosts that are part of this network into this system. So what we're doing at the moment, the moment we create the network, uh, we do practically nothing, and the moment we actually start provisioning hosts, we say, okay, we know which virtual machine we're gonna provision, as part of the virtual machine, we get some extra data uh, among it. We get the host where the virtual machine is actually being provisioned. So we just, at that moment, send a call to Open Daylight saying, hey, I need, I need this host to be part of your setup, basically configuring the host in Open Daylight. And then after I've configured it, I can make it part of the system. The second host is when the interesting stuff uh, starts happening. Uh, and that was part of the debate we had with the Open Daylight people, what should happen here? So at first they said, well, let's just push the entire hosts, all the hosts that you have out of the system, pre-configure them into Open Daylight, and then when you actually start using CloudStack, you can provision the networks and the hosts. And like I just said, we didn't do it. 
So here we had to make a, a number of changes to actually more dynamically deal with hosts be existing and non-existing. So whenever we add a second host, and hopefully it will land on another hypervisor because that will make the example much more interesting, um, the system will, add, will basically send the same call to add the host to the network, activating the host plugins within Open Daylight. Open Daylight will connect to the Open V switch on that particular host, configure it. And then lucky for us, part of the magic of Open Daylight is the moment they figure out that we have a network configuration that spans multiple hosts, it will start building bridges automatically. So we didn't have to do anything to actually create the bridges. That's all being, being, uh, being taken care of by Open Daylight. And we were pretty lucky. It actually worked. But even though we can send a ping to two hosts, it isn't telling you that much. So again, I'm going to have to reiterate, this is a technology preview. And that means that there's a lot of work to be done. We're just in a phase where we can like add machines and basically set up a, a virtual network between several hosts and several virtual machines running. But there's obviously a lot of things that we're lacking. For example, what happens if we remove a cluster from the data center in CloudStack? Nothing happens on, uh, on open daylight yet. What happens if, we, uh, if a host goes down? Uh, we actually don't know yet. It's pretty difficult to test. We have some test cases where it comes back, some test cases where it actually keeps on losing connectivity. But again, the, the point to take home here is by doing this, we gained the insight in how open daylight works. We made links in the community about how to deal with various projects. And actually, we have something to work on. So this is also an open invitation. So I know that there's a lot of people interested in working with Open Daylight, working with CloudStack. And by having this plugin in the code as we have now, there's actually an opportunity to go in and do stuff. Make the plugin work better, make it work with other hypervisors, but also follow, on, uh, follow up on what's going on in the Open Daylight community. I mean, there might not be the most stable, the most reliable, and the best software-defined networking vendor out there, so maybe not ready for production use. But it is an open source project, and they have some quite interesting ideas. So for me personally, it's really interesting to see where this is going in the near future. For example, one of the reasons, uh, one of the things they're now working on, and one of the reasons there's a lot of activity going on, is that they're looking at network function uh, virtualization, which is for me the next step in software-defined networking. I mean, even though we have some troubles uh, with the plugin at the moment, the whole network virtualization bit is pretty much fixed. I mean, it's, it, it's no longer spectacular. There's no longer people tweeting about, hey, I did network virtualization. I mean, any kid with an open vSwitch and a little scripting can do it. The interesting thing now in the software-defined networking world is to be the network function virtualization. And it can mean different things for different people, but for me it means like, let's, do, let's talk about distributed routing. Let's talk about distributed firewalling. Let's talk about distributed load balancing, et cetera. And I know that there's a lot of guys working for a lot of the networking vendors also involved with the Open Data project. So it's not only that it's interesting to follow what they are doing in their project, but it's actually very interesting to keep talking to those people and see where they get their ideas and what we can do to support those models in Apache Cloud Stack. And by having the dialogue, we can actually think about our models and provide the knowledge we have about our networking into the Open Data community because we do have a lot of production deployments. We do have a lot of people running Apache CloudStack for daily operations. And they have experience about what works in production. They have experience about what it is we can do. If we can put that experience and deliver it to people like the people working on the Open Daylight project, we gain their, we get in return, we get their experiences with networking. And we can create better software in both places. And I mean, that's partially of what open source is all about. So I'm hoping that there's more people who are willing to pick up on uh, Open Daylight. I'm sure, for sure going to be working on it in the near future. And yeah, just a last remark, don't use it in production yet. Thank you. If there's any questions? Everybody just wants to go home, right? <laughs> okay, thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>